Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and I am your watch guy today. And today I am introducing you to a brand that I haven't featured on the channel before, but I have owned their watches for over a year now. I just haven't really gotten around to putting a review out. Today I am featuring a brand called Fawn. Now they are available on AliExpress and they are exactly what you would expect from an AliExpress brand. Fantastic specifications, brilliant look to them, homage, inspired pieces and they're pretty cheap for what they are the one that i'm featuring today is 126 pounds and i don't really think for this type of homage in this type of spectrum of the market i don't think you can get much of a better deal we've seen sea stain we've seen tactical frog i even have a pagani design to show you in a couple of weeks but today i'm going to show you fawn's answer to the sub 300t homage now, if you'd like to pick this watch up, I have linked it in the description. That will take you to the Watch You Seek store on AliExpress. This is non-affiliated video. I bought this watch myself out of my own pocket. And you will be getting, as always, a full, open and honest review of this piece. As well as using those links to support the channel, you can subscribe. That really is the best way for you to do it. And leave me a comment. Now, let me turn this camera around and let me introduce you to Fawn. So guys, this is the Fawn Sub 300T homage. I went for the black and yellow option. I just thought that really popped. Really does have a little bit of character to it for me. Now this does come in a stainless steel option, no coating on that one. We have a couple of different color options also. We have the baby blue, or what some people would refer to as Tiffany. We have an orange, a black, uh, and this yellow one. So definitely plenty of different options on there. Let me just reset this bezel because if I don't, it will drive me insane. So the watch itself is a 316L stainless steel. However, we have this fully matte effect finish coating on it. That is a PVD black coating. We have nice accents to that yellow through that um, black coating there. It's an NH35 movement reliable and something that we are all used to it is obviously a hacking and hand winding movement as you can see there hacking the time first position is for the date and second position is for the time itself so the casing is 44.5 millimeters in diameter which would be a big way for a lot of people however they have used the old seiko trick before I get to that, it is 14.95 millimeters thick. That includes the case back and this really nice dome sapphire crystal. The old Seiko trick is the shorter lug to lug. This one comes in a 48.6 millimeters, which makes it wearable even for people with smaller wrists like myself. And we have 20 millimeter lugs, as you would expect on this one. It really does give it that Doxa type of style, making that really long way round to the lugs there. It is a screw down crown in this piece and it has that gear like shape, really easy to get hold of. Not the cutting edge shape that you may be used to, but still easy to use. I'll just clip that back in and screw it down. This one's been easy to use for me anyway. We have a 120 click unidirectional dive bezel and it has those Doxa Sub 300 T markings that you would be expecting. Inner bezel does not rotate, however, the outer bezel does. Now, that was an issue on the earlier Tactical Frogs. Uh, obviously, Fawn got this one right the first time around. There's a little bit of movement in the bezel there. However, it does feel quite secure to the uh, fit, and it is easy enough to get the measurement that you're looking for. I do really like the accents of the white and yellow on this bezel. I think that separates the dial, bezel, and casing very well. The bezel itself has a really easy to use, almost grenade-like grip to the outer edge. Entire casing is in this matte finish. And as we move to the case back, you can see that is a very simple screw down case back. We have the Fawn logo there with the Fawn rose and the usual Chinese inspirational speech around the outer edge, where there is a will, there is a way. It's nice, nice of them to, to encourage us like that. 
A real feature to the case itself or the watch itself is this domed sapphire. As you can see, it does protrude quite well out of the casing and it really does distort the dial in the most fantastic of ways. You can see that we do have a good level of anti-reflective coating on this one also. Altogether, the casing, screw down crown, screw down case back and this sapphire crystal fit provide the watch with 200 meters of water resistance and i think that is suitable for a dive watch obviously if we were going for the 300t you know but 200 meters is very suitable for myself as we move into the dial itself you can see that is a very small fit dial obviously the casing really does overpower this watch quite a bit and makes most of the feature of itself as we look into the dial, you can see that we have a color matched yellow dial. Obviously, a lot of splashes of color through this watch. I say a lot of splashes of color it is pretty much all color and then a little bit of black. So the dial itself is all printed. We have loomed indices around the outer edge, a printed minute track, which is quite intricate to be fair. The usual Doxa type of layout to the logo and the water resistance rating over to this side here. We have a date window at the three o'clock. We have almost two flight markings around the outer edge for the indices, which are loom filled, as I mentioned. Up at the 12 o'clock, we have a slightly different shape. We have a pentagon that is almost elongated towards the center of the dial. Those usual little black tips to the indices that you would expect from the Doxa style on this one. Printed logo up towards the 10 and 11 o'clock, divers rating down towards the four and five. The handset itself is a little bit more irregular. It is almost a full point or full spike on the minute hand with a very broad and large arrow head hour hand. And then we have that Seiko-esque type of second hand that is reaching all the way out to that minute track there. It does really fit the dial quite well as do the other hands. Now these are loomed, so I am gonna get the lights out and we're gonna have a look at how well that is a loom. So I am gonna get the lights out and we're gonna have a look at how well this piece is loomed. This is one of those loom signatures that you can see even before you turn the lights out. It is very well loomed. We have the bright green C3 loom on this one. Very well spread around the indices. That is a printed dial, so that is exactly what we would expect from that. Also, the handset, very plentiful on that loom signature also. I think that they've done a really good job on this one. Out of 10, I'd probably give this a, a 7.5, maybe an 8. I'm going to say 8. It's actually really well lasted and very well spread, as well as being super bright. There's not much more you can ask for in a loom. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going with 8 on this one. Well done to Fawn. So as we move away from the head of this watch, we move on to the band that it is sat on. This is the usual style waffle rubber band. This is the one that is supplied with the piece itself. Now it's rather comfortable if uninspired. It has two rubber keepers up to this side here. One thing that I would have liked to have seen is that this was matte to match the casing. I, I don't really buy it being high gloss i don't think that that really matches the watch as well as it should do on wrist it actually feels really malleable which is a nice thing to have let me just pop it on this for you so you can see the wrist shot so there you go that is the fawn 300t homage on wrist and as i say it has that seiko-esque type of fit to it it really does bring in a very wearable piece due to that lug to lug size and we don't really owe that to fawn that is completely doxa's doing this is just obviously the right way to homage it now i think for 126 pounds i think this is a really good buy we do have other options on the market obviously the sea stain the tactical frog and now pagani design have released their own one thing that I will say is that they are available on bracelets while this is just available on a rubber strap. However, I do think that is a really good option. But where do my moans lie for this piece? Well, first of all, the bezel does have a little bit of play in it there, as you can see. 
not ideal however the bezel does fit well and does have a really premium feeling click to it aside from that i do think that the color matching from the bezel to the dial and the band itself could have been much better this is almost a golden yellow whereas the uh, the dial in particular is very much a neon style yellow i think that that should have been more aptly fit to the dial itself and finally the biggest moment that's going to come from this piece is going to be the logo it's a little bit well well it's exactly comic sans isn't it i feel like they could have done much better than that even the rose with a simple print underneath it I think that would be a much better logo for Fawn. I just think that this is a little bit a little bit childish, to be honest. I feel like they could have done a much better job there. And I do feel like that's going to be one of the main moans for a lot of people looking at this piece. Let me know what you think of that logo. Let me know what you would like to see instead. And maybe we can put that forward to them. Aside from that, £126 is a very good deal for this piece. I think... The, well, the quality control that I've received from this brand of watch has been pretty good. And as you can see, it is a quality watch for the price that you are paying. I would definitely take this one over the Tactical Frog, which is the same price point. We have the Pagani Design above them at 136. I have not yet reviewed that one. However, I'm not sure if I would prefer it or not. And then above that, we have the C-Stand, which is definitely the better watch. However... It is the more expensive watch also, so it should be. Let me know where you think this one fits in the marketplace. All I know, Fawn is definitely an underrated brand at the moment. So guys, there we have it. The Fawn 300T, Sub 300T Homage. Now, tell me what you think. Does this beat Seastern? Does this beat Tactical Frog? Where does it lie in the market? It's slightly cheaper than Pagani. Same price as Tactical Frog and a good chunk cheaper than the c -Stand. So what do you guys think? I also have their GMT in to review and I will try and get that out in the next couple of weeks. I really do think Fauna one of those brands that we should shine a little bit more of a light on just because of the value that they offer on the AliExpress market. So with that being said also, let me know if you've spotted any really good deals lately or any really fantastic looking watches that you don't think anyone's paying enough attention to. If you'd like to pick this watch up, I have linked the Watch You Seek a store on AliExpress in the description. It's an affiliate link, but I have nothing to do with that store. It's just where I bought my one. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think of this watch or anything else in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.